Hello, this is Jordan. This video is being recorded on the late evening of Monday, December 5th, 2022. Thanks so much for joining me today. And in this video, I am going to use some breadth analysis to project what the short and medium term outlook is for gold stocks and uh, you know what we can look for that might signal that the next leg higher is underway. And of course, we look at plenty of things like fundamentals and price action and all of that. So I just have two charts here. And first, focusing on the GDX advanced decline line and two things. Number one, uh, there in yellow, the uh, the fact that it hasn't been so strong since the sector bottomed. And then secondly, in, in the last two rows, the 15-day and 25-day, um, I'm creating an indicator, which is known as, uh, or you could say it's a breadth thrust indicator. So a lot of technicians, and I've discussed this in a video, I don't know, three, four, five months ago, maybe six months ago or earlier in the year. So a lot of technicians, they look at breadth. And when you're coming out of a you know bear market or a severe correction or downturn, you know the market rebounds and they look for really, really strong breadth that signals a breadth thrust. So what I'm looking at, there in the bottom there uh, on the 15 day and 25 day basis is I'm just looking at, I'm looking for, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm looking for um, real a real significant move in those indicators. And so when we're looking at, um, you can look at what happened in early 2016 and also in the middle of 2019. And if you look at uh, the peaks that we saw then in the 25-day and 15-day rate of changes for the advanced decline line. I mean, you can see those those levels really stood out. So I'm kind of using those peaks as indicators of breadth thrust. And if you look at other points in time, like you kind of got close to it uh, in, in the summer of 2020 and then also in 2012 and uh, at the end of the summer there when the market peaked, so it's also possible that the market's really strong, it made a good move, and then it has this thrust after it's already appreciated significantly. So those are less, I mean, th those are less significant. Those are not what we're looking for. I mean, we're the market's coming out of a cyclical bear market, in my opinion. Uh, we're still early enough in the rebound that, you know, we want to see breadth thrusts. And so if we look look at the 15-day and the 25-day there, and if you look at recently, I mean, those indicators have not come anywhere close uh, to the levels that I'm looking for to indicate a breadth thrust. And at the same time, I mean, it's very interesting because if you go back in the summer, uh, the end of the summer there in September, uh, you had a um, positive divergence in the GDX advanced decline line. I talked about it in videos. I talked about it in articles. I talked about it in premium updates. And uh, obviously, that's really significant, the positive divergence in the advanced decline line. Same thing happened during the COVID crash. You can see, interestingly, during the COVID crash, if you look at the GDX advanced decline line, it didn't even decline that much. I mean, only a little bit. Um so anyway, but circling back, I talked about the breadth thrust. So the second point is, and I pointed this out in premium updates in the last couple of weeks, the, the rebound in the strength that we were getting in the sector and, you know, GDX especially, it wasn't confirmed by that much strength in the advanced decline line. I mean, look at the, look at the yellow, look at the blue arrow there, you know, top right corner, a little bit below that, um, basically the cumulative advanced decline line didn't show that much strength even as the market rebounded. It was right before it started to rebound. It was signaling that it was showing strength, positive divergence. Then, of course, the sector rebounded, and during the rebound, the advanced decline line kind of crapped out. So that that was a signal. Maybe I'll be proven wrong in the coming days, but that, to me, was a signal uh, that you know, we're probably going to get some kind of a pause in this rally or some kind of correction for a little while. It wasn't going to be a huge continued blast off. And I think additional evidence of that is the fact that uh, precious metals just rally. They just rallied with the stock market. So, um, you know, that, that is a, you know, that's a short to medium term concern. So, you know, we may have just seen the end of this 
rally and uh you know maybe the market's going to pull back for a little while or consolidate for a little while um basically that's what the advanced decline line is telling us among other things it's not it's not signaling that we're going to continue to run away to the upside and you know if you're looking at if you're looking at price i mean gdx at 29 to 30 200 day moving average real significant resistance so this is also a level that it's going to take a lot to break through it and sustain it same thing with gdxj here you know it rallied up to 37 uh, so there's a confluence of resistance there it includes a 200 day moving average now at the bottom you know we have my breadth indicators percentage of gdxj stocks i'm looking at the top 35 um above that are trading above the 20 day 50 day and then 200 day moving averages and so, you know, at the bottom, you can see this is updated, you know, before today, but 62%, I mean, we're in the 90s as far as percentage of GDXJ above the 20 and 50 day. Looking at the 200 day moving average, that hit 62%. And so if you're looking at, um, basically, the, this is kind of the area where, um, unless you're going to have like a 2016, or 2020 type of rally, this is the area where you, you know you could start to see some selling. Uh, because what if, if you have one of the one of those 2016 or 2020, it just keeps zooming, and then the percentage above the 200 day, it just keeps trending higher till it gets in the 90s. And I mean that's a signal of a real strong bull move. Now, however, um, if you look at the vertical lines, I know they're kind of thin, but I I tried to look for comparable points, you know, going back over the last eight years or so and just look for comparable points, you know, or, or based on where, you know, we're coming off a bottom, we've had a rally, but, but I'm looking at the breadth indicators and I'm looking for uh, percentage above the 200 day and it's around 60%. And then the top two there, they're in the nineties. And so you can see that more often than not, you tend to get, I mean, if you look at specifically Look at 2017, you have two instances there. And then look at 2021 to 2022, you can see that, um, you know, typically this has marked a peak. Now, a couple of times, again, the 2020 example, that's different. 2016, the market just kept going and going. Um, and then the other one is at the end of 2018, beginning of 2019. Uh, so GDXJ um, had a rally there. Um, let's see where we are. Yeah, so GDXJ had that, you know, that that rally in the sector gained traction at the end of 2018 with the Fed's last hike. And so the market did it. It 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 kept going a little bit more, but then it had a pullback, and then of course. It, it had another like higher when the Fed did its first rate cut. So I think that's not to say we're going to repeat that exactly, but I think that's a potential comparison because I think the bottom is in yet at the same time, I'm skeptical that we're going to see GDXJ and the miners blast higher here. You know, we may need to see the stock market roll over, you know, recession, Fed stops, Fed has to cut rates. I mean, to me, I think that has to, that has to happen to get precious metals really moving. And so given that they followed the stock market, there could be some weakness. So I don't know how, how much weakness that means. I don't know if that means, you know, 29 or 30 GDXJ, or even if it's a little bit lower than that, but we'll see. But so now basically if I'm proven wrong, what you'll see happen is the market will move higher, a master of the obvious statement, but also the breadth there at the bottom, right? The percentage above the 200 day moving average is 62%. You would see that climb. Um, you know, higher and higher, you know, it may, it's possible. Maybe it could climb to 70% and then pull back. But that that's the key thing that um, is going to be, a, it obviously, a significant indicator is when we see the market eventually make that next leg higher and you see the percentage above the 200-day, you see that get to 70, 75, 80%. And then, you know, you're you're sniffing out the start of a real bull market. Like that, then that's what should really happen with the next move after the market pauses and corrects here, if I'm right about that. And again, another like obvious statement, 
that type of move is probably going to align with the Fed being done and looking at rate cuts or the Fed actually executing the first rate cut. So I know that was a lot to take in. I hope you got some value out of this commentary and analysis. Uh, follow all my work at the dailygold.com. Uh, I've been under the weather lately. Uh, hopefully starting to feel better. It's been difficult, but uh, I'm hoping I can put out some more content for you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys again in the next video.